Hey folks, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. I'm going to show you how to do something pretty cool. You're going to take any old computer, you're going to put Linux Mint on it, and Wireshark, and guess what? You can create a little probe out of it, start capturing packets as soon as you turn it on. So you've got a packet capture appliance. Now just a little bit of a, uh, I'm going to call it a disclaimer, common sense. These are great little probes if you want to capture packets uh, from just general use. Uh, people at their desk, a receptionist, a printer, a camera, phone, that kind of stuff. These um, obviously are not meant to capture from like 10 gig links, uh, you know, running at 100%, that kind of stuff. But these are great ways to capture packets for everyday troubleshooting and get you into packet analysis. So enjoy, folks. So guess what? The first step, go get Linux Mint. <laughs> now, you can use whatever... Um, Linux build you want to use or distro. Uh, I just chose Mint. It seems to be pretty compatible, fairly easy to use for Windows users. It's got a graphical interface that's fairly intuitive. So I'm going to use that, but you can use whatever you like. Uh, enjoy, but if you want to follow along with the video, go get Linux Mint. Now this goes back to what distro uh, or build you like to use. With Linux Mint, there is no Wireshark present. You'll have to install it, but if you just want to double check, by all means, go ahead. I just uh, basically hit the old equivalent to start button. It popped up. I typed Wireshark. Nothing appeared. It's not there. There's lots of other ways of doing it. That's not the point of this, but Wireshark is not there. We're going to have to add it now, okay? So for the people who know me, I'm not a big fan of a GUI. I'm more of a terminal line, command line kind of guy. So... Um, I'm going to show you how to do this from the command line, right, or the terminal prompt. So before we install uh, Wireshark, we have to update. It's called the system repository. And to do that, you simply go to the uh, command line, the terminal prompt. You type sudo, sudo, apt, update, and boom, let that run, and then you're good to go. On to the next step. We're going to install Wireshark now. Again, you can do it through the application uh, store, but I'm not doing that. So you just literally type uh, sudo sudo space apt space install space wireshark it'll go fetch it it'll install it a bunch of stuff will flash up on your screen this big blue box will pop up uh, i'm not even getting into what it means it doesn't matter we're just gonna hit yes and move on now that we've installed wireshark you can test to see if it's there uh, same thing we're gonna hit that start button and I'm just going to type Wireshark, and now guess what? There it is. So it worked. Again, there's many other ways to do this, but this is the easiest way for people who are not familiar with Linux. Now, this goes back to what I've been talking about for years, literally, and that's preparation. So when you start capturing packets, uh, you should always have your folders spelt out, laid out, and you should know exactly where your trace files are going for a myriad of reasons. I'm not going to get into that right now. So what do we do from the terminal prompt? You're just going to make a directory, mkdir Wireshark. And then CD, you're going to change directory to Wireshark. And then if you display your present, per, present working directory, <laughs> wow, that was a mouthful. Then you go uh, type that in. You'll see home slash user slash document slash Wireshark. And that's where you are. That's where we're going to put stuff. And more importantly, when we run those scripts, that's where we're going to put the trace files. So here's the tricky part. Um, we have a folder structure that we're going to use. We know what directory we want to put these files in. But going back to Wireshark for a moment, um, in many cases, Wireshark will not work properly, so to speak. And what I mean by that is sometimes you won't see a list of your current LAN adapters. So we have to fix that. And the command to fix that in most cases is this, sudo space chmod space plus x space slash usr, so on and so on and so on, just like you see there. Now, after you do that from the command or the terminal prompt, keep saying command prompt, Windows mode, sorry, I apologize for that. Let's get a list of the adapters by typing dump cap space dash uppercase D. That will display all your interfaces. And for me, it's ENS33, which is number one, interface number one. And that's what I'm going to use moving forward. So yours is whatever yours happens to be. Now, here's the thing, though. If you ever work on this machine and install any other network related software that installs a driver or something this order may change so just keep that in mind right it might not always be number one okie dokie little review you've installed all that stuff you've done that chmod command and now we are going to test dump cap that's the application that's going to do the packet capture for us and don't forget in my case my adapter is number one 
So we got dump cap dash i number one space dash w. We're going to write this to a file. And there's our file name. And this is going to go to whatever folder we happen to be in. In my case, it's documents Wireshark. Yours is wherever it happens to be. Now, as it starts capturing, um, it's not going to stop. It's just going to keep going until you break out of it. And the break sequence is obviously control C. That will break you out of it. And then you can actually check to see if that file is there. Now, changing gears, ring buffers, right? Ring buffers, um, I've done tons of videos explaining what that is. I'm not going to get into it. Uh, but you need to understand the syntax uh, for that. Now, in this case, I'm going to do two different things. The first one I'm going to do is I'm just going to capture, again, from interface number one, and I'm going to give a file size of 1024, that's one meg, and dash W and whatever name I want. I called it one meg, just to obviously keep it obvious to me. And it's going to write to that file. Now, in this case, it's going to write a meg and it's going to stop. That's what this does. So one meg and stop. So the first meg, if you want to call it that. Second example, I'm going to capture two one meg trace files. It will not stop. This will like run forever but you'll always see two one meg files. So the last two one meg files. So as you're running this, if you go to that folder and we just do an LSAL, even DIR works in Linux Mint, by the way, you'll see those files being created. So in this first case, if you were to check your processes, dump cap would have um, finished and exited and not be seen at all. In this case, dump cap will run forever including the script name that you run it from as well. So just keep that in mind as we move forward, okay? This is a little bit of a, a little thing to pay attention to. Okay, now for the Windows guys, uh, you're familiar with batch files. That's kind of what we're going to do now. We're going to run a, uh, we're going to write a text file, a script, just a bunch of commands. So when you create this script, I call it the dump cap underscore script is what I you can call it, whatever you want. Uh, it won't work. So when you try to run the script, it will not work. You'll, you'll get an error. So what you have to do is you have to change this uh, to have uh, to be able to execute. I have to admit, Linux Mint made this part pretty easy. So now we want to add this script to your startup. And to do so, you simply go to your system settings uh, within Linux Mint. You literally hit the start button here and, and you go to your settings. This thing pops up and you're going to look for startup applications. And then you literally type whatever you want here. I call it Wireshark Capture. You can call it, again, whatever you want. You can put a comment in it as well. And you browse over to that folder, wherever you happen to put it. I put it in my Documents folder, but you can have it wherever you like. And then I always put a startup delay. Uh, just because in some cases the uh, network interface doesn't light up right away. Uh, maybe there's some port fast issues. Maybe it's Wi-Fi and it's to authenticate. Who knows? I just I want to buy some time. So I just throw 9, 10 seconds in there, whatever it happens to be just to have it wait a bit and then it starts capturing. Now when you reboot the machine or even a virtual machine, however you want to do it, um, you'll probably notice that you'll log in and this will still be running because in most cases it's not generating a whole lot of traffic when it starts up. So it's not like your Windows machine that has a login and an LDAP and DNS and all this kind of nonsense. This will just start up and then it'll, you know, DHCP, ARP, it'll do a couple of things. It's pretty well the end of it. So if you've made it this far, awesome. Congratulations. The next thing we get into is the architecture of whatever capture tool you want to use. Now, again, if this is general use, everyday stuff, you can use a laptop, use any old desktop. It, it does, really does not matter. Um, I do encourage you, though, to make sure you have at least two adapters. Just It's more of a, it's a preference for me, but it makes a lot of sense. So for example, this adapter does all the heavy lifting. It's your capture packet port. It could be called an analysis port, a monitor port. Every vendor's got a different name. It doesn't matter. It's the port that does the capturing. So this could go into a tap. This can go to a span or a tap port or port mirroring or whatever you want to do. That's the port. That's the port that does all the work. And then you have a secondary port. And that could be anything. It could be USB Ethernet. It could be a USB Wi-Fi. It could be Wi-Fi. It could be it doesn't even another Ethernet port. The reason why you want this though is you want to be able to remotely control this box. You want to remote into it using remote desktop, VNC, whatever you want to use. File transfers. You might use FTP, SMB, HTTP. There's a lot of ways of getting files off of this. You might have a script that copies files off of it automatically, but you want a way to get into it, and you don't want that traffic gumming this up. So when you go through the actual analysis, it's really annoying having your remote traffic in those packets. 
So I strongly encourage this layout and with the prices of USB dongles for either Wi-Fi or Ethernet, this is not a big deal. Okay, so give this a chance. Let me know how it goes and have a good day, folks. Bye for now.